big challenges is to educate physicians so they can deal with it. So here, are some of the features of the New Genes Society uh, curriculum at Hopkins. It provides an intellectual context for medicine of the future based on the individuality of each patient. It encompasses both genetic and environmental variables. It teaches our students to think of a continuum of health and disease. That is to say, you don't learn about health in one year and disease in the other year because patients are either healthy or sick. There are all, all of us are in the middle of some continuum. And it started on September 2009. It's an ongoing experiment. Um, and uh, in closing, I'll just say that the path to individualized medicine is not something that's going to happen overnight. So it's going to require rigorous research, basic, translational, and clinical. New technology will accelerate this pace. It's already begun. Uh, there are several examples here. I'm just going to mention one, this glioblastoma example, which is a brain tumor. We used to treat all patients with glioblastoma the same. Bert Bolstein and Hopkins and his colleagues sequenced a dozen glioblastomas, and they found that some of them had a mutation in a particular gene known, known as isocitrate dehydrogenase 1. And if you go back and look at the patients who are, we all thought of as monolithic and we had treated them all the same, it turns out that the behavior of the patients with, whose glioblastoma has an IDH1 mutation is quite different from the behavior of the patients who don't. So we're already beginning to individualize those patients. And the same was true for ALL and sickle cell disease. So it's going on uh, constantly and will evolve towards individuality. And in the end, the doctor will be able to understand the puzzle of their patient. Thank you.